So, welcome back students. So, in the last class, uh, we are talking about the unitary transformation through which you can transform one set of orthonormal basis to another set of orthonormal basis. And the condition was the T matrix should be this. Now, let us go back to the example that I show in the last class that uh, my E E 1 vector was something like this, E 2 vector was something like this and also I have a prime basis which was this, this is another basis. this is another basis. So, now, uh, for if you note that E i E j for the first basis non prime basis, it is orthonormal and this the new one is ortho also orthonormal. You can check that, you can confirm that whether this is orthonormal or not. So, and you will find that uh, uh, both the things are orthonormal. Now, we know that this is my prime basis, this is my non prime basis and this is my prime basis. I, I have the basis in 2D, two vectors are given to me. Here also two vectors are given to me. I know that uh, both the cases, the basis that is forming are orthonormal to each other. And also I know most importantly the T matrix the transformation matrix I know which was something like this. Now, according to our theory that uh, we developed in our last class suggests that this condition has to be fulfilled. So, just check in this, uh, this small calculation I want to just check whether this T matrix which is transforming this basis to this basis are following that thing or not. So, if I do then T matrix is there, T dragger matrix is how much? The last class I mentioned this is a transpose plus complex conjugate. So, if I make a transpose it will be something like this. Since all the elements here are the real elements, so there is no need to make a complex conjugate because complex conjugate gives you the same thing because they are real. So, now I need to just multiply these two things T T dagger and check whether this is a unit matrix or not. So, so let me find whether they are this this gives you half. So, straight away I can write half here. and 1 minus 1, 1 1. So, half 1 1 minus 1 minus 1, so it will be 2, 1 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1 it is 0, 1 1 it is 0, 1 1 1 1 it is again 2 divided by 2. So, it will be just 1 0 0 1. So, that means, this transformation which uh, I was uh, doing in, in the last class, the T matrix that is forming here is such a way, they are forming in such a way that they are following these things. So, obviously, this is a unitary transformation and quite obvious because whatever the vector I am getting here as a basis is orthonormal. So, we just cross verify that this is true just for checking. So, whenever you transfer one matrix one, one set of basis to another set of basis with some transformation, if the transformation matrix is known to you, you can readily verify with this that they are forming a unitary transformation or not. If they are not forming any unitary transformation, then you can ensure that the new set of basis may not be orthonormal. Okay. After that, uh, we will say something another 
important thing which is say A and B are two matrix. A and B are two matrix. If A and B are related something like say B is equal to P inverse A P where P is a non singular matrix then we say if they are related like this relation we can say A and B are similar. So, by definition I have one matrix A, I have another matrix B and A and B somehow related to this kind of thing P inverse A P if I multiply if I have one matrix P and then if I do these things I will get something another matrix B, A and B is related like this. So, then I call that A and B as similar, why it is required? So, let us try to find out why it is important. So, the same old rule that if E is related to E prime with some matrix say T, then the vector in prime basis is related to this matrix. So, T transpose matrix let us put a name on that. So, let me write it is say A where A is this. Okay, up to this is fine. So, now uh, the thing is in non prime basis I have two vectors say x and y and they are related like y is equal to some matrix say m and some matrix m and x. Please note that m is a matrix it is operating over a vector when a matrix is operating over a vector whatever it is giving is also a vector another vector. The simple example is a rotation matrix. So, if I have a rotation matrix if I rotate if I operate over some I will have say another matrix like this another vector like this. So, rotation matrix is rotated one vector to another vector. So, this is operation. So, you can consider different kind of operation through which you can change one matrix to one vector to another vector. Here for example, I am doing the same thing I have a vector given x a vector giving y in prime basis I operate m over the vector x I am getting a new vector y. In other word x and y are related to this operation in non prime basis. What about in prime basis? In prime basis that means I transform this matrix to that also I transform y matrix to y prime like this. Then also I can get in the new prime basis also I can write a similar kind of equation. In the prime basis I can have also a similar kind of equation. Now, the question is what is the relationship between m and n try to understand the problem once again I have x and y in my hand which is in prime basis which are related to some operation m which is a matrix I operate over x and I am getting y this x and y which is in non prime basis can be represented in prime basis also that is why I put the prime here and in that prime basis also I can define a matrix n such that I can operate over that and I am getting this matrix back. 
So, now the question is what is the relationship between this and this. So, now I will going to use my this rule. This rule suggests that v prime and v this is the two vector which is related to a. So, I can write it readily here. So, here if I use this y prime let me write it here. y prime is nothing but a into y the relationship between y and y prime is related to a like this n x prime is also related to a like this fine. Now, I make a operation a inverse from the left hand side. So, a inverse a y is equal to a inverse n a x. A inverse a is 1. So, I will have one equation which is y is equal to a inverse n a x. Now, this equation and this equation are same. This equation and this equation are essentially same equation. If I compare these two equation, then readily I find a relationship between n and m and the relation is let me erase this part. my m is nothing but a inverse n a. If you remember uh, just I mentioned earlier what about uh, the similar matrix it is nothing but the same thing. So, m and n are similar here because they are related with another matrix non singular matrix a which is nothing but the relationship which is nothing but t transpose t is the relationship between the e and e prime. So, that means, if I know the relationship between the basis if this matrix information of this matrix in my hand I can make a similar transformation that means, I can have a operation n which is on prime basis. So, the similar operation I can have m in non prime basis which is which in they are related in this way with the similar way. So, that is why this operation and this operation are eventually the similar operation because they are related to this uh, sim similar uh, because they are similar. So, this a with this a I can find that these two things are similar. This is called the similarity transformation. So, I can transform one matrix to another matrix in the operator form because matrix are now deal work as a operation operator because it operate over the vector. So, this is called the similarity transformation. It is called the similarity transformation. Okay. After uh, the knowledge of the similarity transformation and all these things. Now, we will go to a more important thing which is Eigen value and Eigen vector of a matrix. So, so far I am mentioning that a matrix say A is a matrix it is operating over x and as a result it is giving something like y. So, I operate this over this and I am getting. So, in matrix notation in matrix notation I should write a 1 1 a 1 2 a 1 n a n 1 to a n n this is my matrix as a operator x I should write x 1 x 2 x n. If I do this operation then I will get this is a n by n matrix this is a n by 1 matrix. So, if I do the operation I will get another column matrix here. So, this column matrix the elements I should write y 1 
y 2 y n, where the general element y i, the general element, how I am getting the general element? By the multiplication of this. So, this equation, so i will be a i j x j, j is transform 1 to n. This is the general notation of these things. The important thing is that I can operate this over a matrix, which is represented in n tuple notation or in column matrix. This will operate and gives a new new vector and they are related with this. It is known, I mean it is not a very new thing here. Now, important thing is The important thing is, let me now write here Eigen value and Eigen vector. So, now the important thing is that A is an operator that is operating over some vector x as a result I am getting something like this. What is the difference between these and the previous thing? In the previous thing what I am getting that A is operating over x and I am getting something called y. This vector and this vector are assumed to be not the same thing. It may possible that they are not the same thing normally it happens, but here we have something special. I operate A over x, after having the operation I am getting some vector which is the same vector multiplied by some constant. So, essentially what is the meaning of that? If this is a vector, if I operate over this vector, the vector is not changing, the length of the vector rather changing. So, I am just changing operating over these things and I am just changing the length of the vector, because lambda is characterized by the magnitude of this vector and this right hand side is changing means I am changing lambda. So, I am eventually, so that means I operate over that where the vector, the direction of the vector is not changing or the what is changing is the length of the vector. So, the, I am not generating any new vector, what I am generating is a vector which is the same vector, but whose length is different. This is very important in quantum mechanics, because in quantum mechanics we will learn that that is why this concept is important. That in quantum mechanics what happened that I am operating this over this a state. Now, in the quantum mechanics this vector are represented by state. So, I, I will operate a operator over a state, so that the state will not going to change. So, right hand side here the vector is not going to change in quantum mechanics I will have the state here in state of vector. So, the state will not going to change. So, this kind of operation is very important in quantum mechanics where you operate over a state with some operation and as a result you are getting the state which is the old state, but with some value here. This value is essentially Eigen value of the operator. So, let us write it x is called the Eigen value and x is called the Eigen vector. Eigen means characteristics, so this is the characteristics value of a operator A, this is the characteristics vector of the operator A. So, one is vector, one is value, Eigen value, Eigen vector. Also, I can write this in a different way. If I take this right hand side, so it will be something like this. I need to multiply because lambda is a constant, I need to multiply it by the unit vector. This now from that I can generate one equation. I can generate one equation 
and the equation is mod of a minus lambda of i is equal to 0. This mod sign is not a mod sign rather this is the determinant of that. So, I write and when I uh, writing that I say mod of this it is not a mod in that sense it is just a determinant. So, better to write a date of these things is equal to 0. So, this is called the secular equation secular equation or the characteristics equation. From this secular equation, I can get the value of lambda. So, let us go to some examples. If I uh, give some example, then it will be helpful and then you will understand few things. So, let us start with that. So, I know the basics of eigenvalue and eigenvector and now I will try to apply that over uh, some vector. So, uh, over some matrix. So, let us find say 2 1 0 3 this is the matrix. Now, you are asked to find out what is the eigenvector of uh, eigenvalue of these things. So, I need to find out the secular equation, the secular equation was something like this. So, if I do that then date of this is 0. So, if I do that, so 2 minus lambda lambda into i that means, okay, let me write it more clearly 2 by 2 matrix how it look like. So, it is a 1 1 minus a 1 1 a 1 2 a 2 1 a 2 2 minus lambda 1 0 0 1. I want to find out the end date of entire matrix. So, what I do? So, it will be a 1 1 minus lambda a 1 2 a 2 1 a 2 2 minus lambda and determinant of that is equal to 0. The structure will be something like this. So, I will going to use the same structure. So, 2 minus lambda 1 0 3 minus lambda is equal to 0. If this is the case, then I will have 2 minus lambda 3 minus lambda is equal to 0, because the determinant this multiplied by this and this is 0. So, I will have. So, what lambda value I will have? lambda 1 is equal to 2 and lambda 2 is equal to 3. This. So, quite easy that if a matrix is given then you can figure it out. So, now I will uh, take another example to show that it is not necessarily that uh, I will always get uh, say 2 1 if I change this to minus 1 say what happens this was 0. So, that is why I am getting some uh, value which are always real, but what happened in this case 2 1 minus 1 3. So, let us again try to find out the secular equation is 2 minus lambda 1 minus 1 3 minus lambda because of this non zero value now i am getting something zero so 2 minus lambda 3 minus lambda and then this is minus 1 so i will get a plus 1 here so my equation is now slightly different so, uh, now I need to solve this, this is this will be a quadratic equation I need to solve this. So, it will be 6 minus 5 lambda plus lambda square 
plus 1 is equal to 0 or in other word it is lambda square minus 5 lambda lambda square minus 5 lambda plus 7 is equal to 0. So, now I know how to solve that. So, lambda 1 is minus b plus root over of b square which is 25 minus 4 a c. So, minus 4 a into c here a c is I will just use a x square plus b x plus c equal to 0 the solution I am using. I believe all of you are aware of these things. I am just using this one. So, here 4 a c is 28 and then 2. So, 1 lambda 1 is this. So, it is nothing but 5 by 2 plus i this quantity is minus 3. So, I will put a i here. So, root over of 3 by 2 and lambda 2 is nothing but the complex conjugate of this. This sign is changing 1 is plus and 1 is minus ok fine. So, with this two example I show that with these two example I show that that uh, there is a possibility that uh, eigen, eigen value may be complex it is uh, not an issue. So, I will going to stop here in the next class I will again start uh, with this point and trying to find out what happened when the eigen, eigen values are same here in both the cases both the examples I find two eigen values which are different and there is a possibility that I can have one uh, one matrix where the eigen values are different or same. So, what happen it is different and what happen it is same that is important thing that we will going to discuss in the next class. Also there is a relationship between eigen values and the trace of the matrix and determinant of the matrix that I also show in the next class and with that uh, so let us stop here in the next class we start from here and show how the different uh, eigen values that is I am getting which is if it is degenerate then I have something extra uh, with that. So, what extra I will get from that? So, in the next class we will discuss with that we will stop here. So, see you in the next class.